Now, what is a crocodile tear syndrome? Just like Frey's syndrome in auricular temporal, whenever you are eating uh, post peritonectomy, the skin overlying the peritone will show sweating. Similarly, whenever there is any facial nerve lesion proximal to the geniculate ganglion, then the regenerating uh, preganglionic salivary fibers are misdirected towards the pterygopalatine ganglion and they project to the lacrimal gland and that in turn will lead to lacrimation while eating which is called crocodile tears. What is Mobius syndrome doctor? Congenital facial diplegia and a convergent strabismus together due to the cranial nerve 7 and 6 is called Mobius syndrome. Now let us take up vestibular cochlear. Vestibular cochlear is easy. Many times we discussed in uh, um, ENT once more. Balance and hearing. Vestibular is balance, cochlear is hearing. It is a pure somatic sensory afferent nerve. Either balance or hearing, it is only receiving. Right? It exists the brainstem at CP angle, so acoustic neuroma can press on it. And it typically is confined only to the temporal bone because after all ear is only in the temporal bone. And uh, this is how from the uh, pontomedullary junction, it will be originating and passing to the internal auditory meatus to ultimately supply the Saccule, utricle, semicircular canal, and the cochlea. So, that's the entire part of it. So, there's a vestibular ganglion and a cochlear ganglion. Then, vestibular nuclei, cochlear nuclei. So, this is what we need to remember now. This vestibular cochlear nucleus has a very close relationship with another part of the brain which is important for the balance of our body, cerebellum. We will take cerebellum in more detail from Monday. Cerebellum has so many lobes in that the flocular nodular lobe is the one which is typically associated with the functionality of maintaining a balance. So that's the reason it has got a connections with it. Then. Um, from where is it bringing uh, all the impulses from vestibular cochlea? The crystal amplares of the semicircular ducts and the hair cells in the utricular and saccular mac maculae. Now, why should there be semicircular and utricular saccule separately? Linear acceleration is perceived by semicircular by utricle and saccule, angular acceleration is by the semicircular. Both of them are ultimately carried by the vestibular component of vestibular cochlea. Ultimately, it will be projecting to the four vestibular nuclei in the brainstem, and also it will be projecting to the flocular nodular lobe of the cerebellum, and uh, um, it is very important and any lesion to that can lead to disequilibrium, vertigo and nystagmus. Then coming to cochlear nerve. It is important for the audition and in the cochlear ganglion, the spiral ganglion otherwise. You have the first order sensory bipolar neurons which are located in that and uh, they project to the hair cells of the organ of Carthy and uh, they ultimately will be reaching the cochlear nuclei which are located in the brain stem and uh, any loss of it can lead to sensory neural hearing loss if it is a destructive loss but if it is an irritative loss then tinnitus as what you see in the case of the endolymphatic hydrops menias it is that increased pressure which is causing a constant irritation which is leading to the tinnitus as one of the important clinical presenting feature of the menias. Then glass pharyngeal, it is also important for the taste, salivation and swallowing. 
and uh, it is also otherwise important for maintain our uh, blood pressure and our respiration regulation also it is important why because from the carotid sinus which contain the baroreceptors that monitor the central blood pressure it will be it is one of the important afferent from carrying the impulses from there then the chemoreceptors that monitor co2 and oxygen concentration of the carotid body also are carried by the glossopharyngeal and glossopharyngeal is called the nerve of the third pharyngeal pouch so first pharyngeal pouch is fifth second is seventh third is ninth third is ninth and it's mainly a sensory nerve and jugular foramen need to be remembered because it is a common exit for all the three ninth tenth and also the eleventh then there is a auricular branch of the vagus so via this auricular branch of the vagus it will be ultimately innervating the external ear and the external auditory meatus the glossopharyngeal this is all important to understand the referred pain in the case of the glossopharyngeal neuralgias then uh, uh we said no what is the common sensory nucleus for taste is uh, uh all your three 7th 9th and 10th nucleus tracheus solitarius yes. so whatever the sensations it brings from the external ear and the external auditory meatus ultimately you projecting it into the spinal trigeminal tract and the nucleus in the pons then pharynx one of the important innervation comes from the glossopharyngeal nerve then the mucous membrane in the partial thirds of the tongue the tonsil the upper pharynx tympanic cavity auditory tube if some if some water goes into the ear some mosquito creeps into the partial part of the tongue all those things are conveyed by the glossopharyngeal and uh, the gva component also serves the carotid sinus function also and uh, whenever something touches what will happen we get a gag reflex right so the how do you know that something is touching for the gag re reflex afferent component should be there no that is through the glossopharyngeal gag reflex ka afferent component then taste buds in the posterior third of the tongue because anterior two thirds are carried by the cordy tympani and uh, facial nerve and uh, taste from the posterior third is taken ultimately to which nucleus common nucleus for taste is solitary tractus nucleus tractus solitarius and uh, there is one important muscle that we need to remember and about glossopharyngeal stylopharyngeus and uh, stylopharyngeus ultimately receives the motor innervation from glossopharyngeal naturally glossopharyngeal should have some motor uh, nucleus located in the medulla so what is that nucleus which is the motor nucleus shared between uh, the 10th and uh, the glossopharyngeal it is the nucleus ambiguous in the lateral medulla which ultimately sends the efferent fibers to the stylopharyngeus through the glossopharyngeal instead of through the vagus then parotid gland already sublingual submandibular are all uh, receiving secretory motor fibers which are coming from the mandibular division of oh, sorry coming from uh, lacrimal sublingual submandibular all facial so what is left over parotid so the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers that innervate the parotid fundamentally predominantly travel through the glossopharyngeal so once more where will then instruction that parotid should now produce the salivary secretion come from it is the inferior salivary nucleus 
earlier for the sublingual, submandibular and lacrimal, what is important? Superior salivatory nucleus. So, this is one of the favorite uh, questions of the examiner. Yeah. Um, somebody, Rohit was saying that, he is saying that the class is not uploaded into Edmodo. So, I by mistake is reading it as uh, today's class is not uploading into our mind. So, uh, probably uh, some more uh, creatives would have made it more interesting, but uh, I feel it is more of a summary because uh, uh, even if you understand super duper also ultimately you need to remember few common standard questions only, right. So, superior is for what doctor? Super salivatory nucleus for sublingual, submandibular, and lacrimal and facial is involved. Then uh, glossopharyngeal is inferior salivatory nucleus and ultimately parotid. So, how does it reach? The preganglionic fibers start in the inferior salivatory nucleus, they project via the tympanic nerve and pass through the lesser petrocell nerve and reach the votic ganglion. Tell me what are the counterparts for the sublingual for this? There it is a greater petrocell instead of lesser petrocell. It is pterygopalatine instead of votic ganglion. Then post ganglion fibers from the votic ganglion in turn will project to the parotid gland via the auriculotemporal. In that case, who is carrying them to the lacrimal gland? Zygomatic and lacrimal nerve are carrying it to the lacrimal gland, um, but in this case, it is to the auricular temporal. So, that is all the story. So, what are the important uh, railway stations you need to remember before reaching the ultimate destination of parotid? Inferior salivatory nucleus, lesser petrocell nerve, otic ganglion, and close the door. Lot of uh, Flies are coming back. So, that is very important. Now, doctor, uh, class is perfect, sir. I was asking for notes. Okay, okay. So, maybe today I am little myasthenic and lethargic. Uh, we can probably run a little more faster. By now, we would have finished the remaining two topics. But anyway, cranial nerves always you need to take them in. Then, otherwise, uh, uh, e e e e it will not get on well. It is like a brandy. It is no more a beer um, or a vodka or a tequila. It is more uh, it, you and it need to get into each other. That is the neuroanatomy. All right. What happens if there is a problem in glossopharyngeal? There is a loss of gag reflex because it is an afferent limb. Then there is a loss of carotid sinus reflex. There is a loss in the taste in the posture third and glossopharyngeal neuralgias need to be remembered. Then what about vagus doctor? Conation, because recurrent laryngeal nerve everything which is important for our uh, vocal cord muscles. Conation, swallowing, elevation of palate and taste, they are all associated with the vagal. And it also innervates the viscera of the neck, thorax and abdomen. And uh, it is the nerve of the fourth and sixth branchial arches. First, the trigeminal, second, sir, uh, facial, third, glossopharyngeal, fourth and sixth is vagal. And uh, jugular foramen is the point of exit, which need to be remembered. Then, uh, uh, yeah, from where it basically carries the sensory innervation. Are there any sensory innervation supply that it uh, does? Yes, sir. Infratentorial dura, because supratentorial dura is all by trigeminal. Infratentorial dura and posterior surface of external ear and the external artery meatus and the tympanic membrane. It is all cutaneous, I mean, sensory innervation is by the vagus. Then uh, it is the spinal trigeminal tract and nucleus is the common uh, station where all sensory things are reported. 
luckily there is no special sensory nucleus especially for uh, the vagus mainly vagus is the carrier that's what you need to appreciate then what is the general visceral afferent from which part of the viscera is it bringing the sensations the mucous membrane of the pharynx larynx esophagus trachea thoracic and abdominal viscera until the left colic flexure is all basically by the vagus in the larynx you know above vocal cords below vocal cords what is the innervation which is recurrent laryngeal which is superior laryngeal but ultimately all of them are branches of vagus so that is the reason any sensory thing of the pharynx whenever we drink water we know it is hot or cold whenever the uh, any hot or cold thing passes through our larynx anything will be known only because of the vagus then uh, it all reports to the ultimately the solitary tract and the nucleus then taste buds anterior two thirds are facial posterior one third is glossopharyngeal still you are, if you are a rich man you can put a laddu all the way into your epiglottis and feel the taste through vagus also if you have too much of thing which you don't want to share with others right so taste buds in the epiglottis are fundamentally the sva component and ultimately any taste will go to the solitary tract and the nucleus then what is special visceral efferent it will go and supply and make them contract the pharyngeal arch muscles of the larynx and pharynx they are mainly by the vagus with few exceptions tensor velli palatini is by the fifth nerve spilopharyngeus is by the glossopharyngeal but otherwise overall larynx pharynx muscles are all by the vagus then upper esophagus castrated muscles they are also by the uh, what you call vagus and the muscles of the uvula that's the reason in a gag reflex sensory is carried by glossopharyngeal but efferent is carried by the vagus and the levator valley palatini and palatoglossus they are also by tensor and the levator are different so that is also by the vagus so doctor will take a break because too many insects are uh, uh, camouflaging us they may pass into the nose or ear and uh, we need uh, some attention uh, huh? so uh, i hope uh, uh we'll take a break for today tomorrow 9 to 12 we have a as usual a test full scale neat pg mock test 240 questions 12 to 2 we will have a quick review discussion so if you don't have housemanship uh, sunday duty injection duty please do come we we'll love to see all of you huh? then um, uh, those who could not take a online test and then do participate in live discussion Huh? Thank you, Doctor.